much as we pick on the folks over in Austin, uh, we have many valuable colleagues over there that we work well together with. And uh, this next gentleman I've known for, I think, probably almost 30 years. And so please join me in welcoming to the stage Dr. Hiro Tanaka. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Everybody in this room is aging. And everybody will be aging as well. And we know that some people age gracefully, and some people age miserably. This is one example of showing a graceful aging. I'm sure that you want to be live like her. I mean, she's gorgeous, even at the 75 years of age. But aging is associated with reduction in the fitness component. If you look at the balance, muscle strength, endurance, all components of physical fitness that you're familiar with, they go down with advancing age. So because of this, you know that aging is associated with physiological limitations. So the character on the far right is a Japanese character uh, depicting old. And it turns out this character came from this ideogram showing the old person with long hair and a curved back has to rely on that cane to stand up, similar to this picture right here. So aging, traditionally, is associated with uh, physical limitations. So because of this, when we talk about aging, we tend to focus on the frail elderly that suffers from physical limitations and the disease state. But the one population that's situated completely opposite end of the spectrum, that is very positive. That's a, a master's athlete. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. So if you look at the master's athletes, they look like this. They show gray hair. They show wrinkles. But their physical function, their health status is enormously high. So in a sense, they remind me of this species, naked mole rats. And you may be thinking, how dare you to compare our beloved master's athletes with naked more rats. But I'm going to get back to this. That's actually a positive sign. Okay? It's called a tease. So I'm going to come back to this. OK, so if you look at athletic performance, it's improved quite a bit over the years. If you look at these Texas women back in 1964, it says, Texas girls aim for Tokyo, which is Tokyo Olympics. These are the elite sprinters of that time. But can you imagine those girls with beehive hair comes to compete against uh, today's athletes? We really can't compare. So you can tell how uh, sports performance has improved over the years. And the one thing that you notice in these days <coughs> is this. Uh, it's interesting. If you look at the peak performance age, so if you are in, with development, your performance improves and it goes down. So the age that you can attain peak performance is remarkably constant, going from 1896, the first Olympics, to the most recent Olympics right here. It's very constant. Yet, one thing you notice in these days is this. Emergence of older athletes still competing successfully against young, healthy athletes. So this is one example. Ryan Giggs of Manchester United, which is my team, by the way. He was a Premier League champion at the age of 39, despite the fact that he's showing gray hairs and baldness in his head. This is another example. Dara Torres. Uh, she was an Olympic silver medalist at the age of 41. Well, this is a sport that teenage girls excel. If you think about that, that's quite remarkable how she did in those Olympic uh, stage. One of the things happening in these days is this. So if you look at this graph, the fastest time is on the purple, and you have an age group record going from 40s to 70s. And you can see that with a years, the older athletes are improving their performance substantially. That the gap between a fastest time and the oldest age group is closing very closely. So, older people get, uh, catching up with young people in terms of a athletic performance. 
probably a more dramatic illustration of this concept can be found here. So what I'm showing you here is a running event in a track and field going from 100 meter sprints to marathon running. And the second column I'm showing you is a Olympic winning time from a Athens, Greece, so the first modern Olympic Games in 1896. Now, if I give you a current age group record that wins against those a gold medalist is there. So if you look at the 100 meter sprint, 61 year old man can win the gold medals if you transform him back to the first Olympic Games. Look at the marathon. 73 year old man can beat a Olympic gold medalist. So progression of athletic performance is enormous, especially if you think about historical context. Because back in those 1896, life expectancy is about 48 years of age. So in a sense, dead people can beat a Olympic gold medalist. Now we are getting into a TV drama, Walking Dead, if you will. All right, how old do you think this guy is? If you put the Jason's mask on, you really can't tell how old this guy is, right? But if you take off mask, you can tell he's a 76-year-old bodybuilder. Let me show you another example. If you look at her, again, if you put the mask on, you really can't tell how old she is. I'm sure that some of those are male college students may be thinking, damn, if you see her in the gym, <laughs> right? Well, but if you take her mask off, you can tell that she's the oldest female bodybuilder in the world, Ernestine Shepard. Well, one of the tricky things about aging is if you look at the face, physique, sometimes you can tell so, a age. So this is one example of Javier Zanetti, who's a captain of Inter Milan. And he started out playing as a teenager and played close to 40 years of age. Any player card picture you look at, you really can't tell how old he is. So the question is, is there any way to objectively assess biological aging? There is one. So this is Thomas Sydenham. People call him a British Hippocrates. So he said this, a man is as old as his arteries. So the arterial function in general, and arterial stiffness in particular, has been used as an objective index of aging. So what kind of aging uh, do those master's athletes demonstrate? So if you look at the arterial stiffness as assessed by pulse rate velocity, you can see in the sedentary populations, you see marked increase in arterial stiffness, as you can see in the yellow. But if you look at the master's athletes, compare them with a young athletes, you can see those age-related increase is substantially attenuated or absent. So the master's athletes do demonstrate a reduced aging, if you will. And when we think about master's athletes, we tend to look at them on the field, in the gym, but I argue that they are everywhere. And one of those master's athletes is this, Japanese female power divers. They're a fascinating group of women. So what they do, they dive into the water 100 to 200 times a day. And what they're trying to do is to collect the pearls hidden in the oysters, seashells, and seaweed on the bottom of the ocean floor. And they start out when they're in the middle school. They continue to do so. Now, average age of these women is about 65 years of age because no young women come into these brutal professions. Okay. So, three years ago, I decided to go to Japan to study them. And when I was telling my colleague about it, and everybody is thinking, hey, I'm so jealous you're going to study the power divers, and everybody is thinking about those uh, gorgeous, exotic, women that they saw in the 007 movies, right? But in reality, they look like this. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's totally different from your imaginations. So what we did there is to study arterial stiffness named a cavi. And as you can see, the power divers, 
do demonstrate a substantially reduced arterial stiffness compared with sedentary women of the same age and in the same fishing village. So, master's athletes are everywhere. Okay, so if I tell you that he's a master's athlete and he's a world record holder, you may not think too much because you may be thinking, well, he may be the only one who's competing in that age group. Well, but if I show you his time, then you got to be impressed. So he's Ed Whitlock, who recently passed away. But his time is amazing. If we have to try to run the marathon, running below three hours is extremely tough. And he achieved that when he was 73 years of age. He's, she's also another world record holder. And if I show you a time of 1983, you don't feel too much. So let me show you how she runs. Just imagine that she's eight, 88 years of age. So you can kind of, if you imagine the 88 year old that you know and compared with her, you got to be impressed with her performance. Actually, the one, another thing that you should be impressed with is how she trains. It turns out she joins elementary school track and field team and she trains three times a week with fifth and sixth grade kids. So let me show you the picture here. How cute is this? <laughs> huh? Look at this 88 year old grandma training with putting tires with elementary school kids. I mean, you got to be impressed with what she can do on the field. So again, now I'm coming back to naked mole rats. So the fascinating about this species is this. Well, first of all, they live very long, but they are very physically active. They don't reduce physical activity. If you look at any rats, mice, their physical activity goes down. These guys don't. If you look at their sexual activity, they're very active close to the death. They don't even rely on the Viagra for that. If you look at the muscle strength, bone mineral density that a lot of older people suffer, they don't show any reductions. If you look at the arterial stiffening, I told you, the biological index, they don't de demonstrate arterial stiffening. If you look at the cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and those age-related diseases, they are very rare. They don't show cognitive dysfunction either. So to me, the closest population that we have is master's athletes. So it's no wonder that if you uh, go to a Japanese zoo, they are uh, one of the best tourist attractions. A lot of kids go there to see, a lot of people go there to see. So if you're going to a souvenir shop, you can buy a lot of goods associated with this. And if you think about Japan is suffering from one of the greatest aging uh, problems, it's, you can kind of tell why these animals are very, very popular. I mean, they even have an uh, earring, for God's sake. <laughs> so, if you look at the master's athletes, they remind me of Hippocrates saying here, all the parts of the body which have a function, if used in moderation and exercised in labors, in which each is accustomed, become thereby healthy, well developed, and age more slowly. But if unused and left idle, they become liable to disease, defective in growth, and age more quickly. So that's what a master's athlete is all about. It's so fun to study, so fun to research, but they give us a clue in terms of what we need to do as we get older. And this is a population that shows those enthusiasm and passion. How, how many times when we think about older people, we tend to think about passions? Look at the passions displayed on their face. To me, that's what I want to live, and that's what everybody else wants to live. Thank you very much. Great job, Hira. Thank, Thank you. you. We get several questions here for you. Okay. Uh, Stu from Albion College. Do you think that with all of our advancements in technology, exercise, and nutrition, will we see more master athletes competing later in their careers? Yeah, there's no question about that. You can see in all kinds of sports, 
the uh, increasing number of all the athletes are competing. And one of the things that's really interesting, if you look at a uh, De La Torres, or if you look at a Lance Armstrong close to the end of his career, they are using like a, what I call a Formula One approach. So they are incorporating physical uh, therapy, dietitians, strength coaches, they got those army of supporting staff to help them succeed in those events. So there's no question, if they do that, probably they can prolong their uh, athletic career and they do well. Cool. From Nathan Frieschenhan from um, Texas A&M at San Antonio. Do you think there is a relationship with muscle memory from exercise with helping Alzheimer's, uh, decreasing Alzheimer's prevalence in older age? Yeah, so, so I do a, so in these days I get into research dealing with a uh, dementia and Alzheimer's disease using a functional MRI. So one interesting thing about a, what we can do to prevent those uh, brain disease, if you look at NIH consensus statement, there are not many things that could work. And one promising therapy that they talk about is exercise. So the chronic exercise, which is a, a uh, characteristic feature of master's athletes. So I think that's what we really need to focus on, what we need to push. Yeah. So you knew someone was going to have to ask you about the naked mole rats. This is Monica at San Antonio. What causes naked mole rats to have such a long lifespan? Yeah, see, that's actually one thing that they don't know. Uh, it's one of the mysteries. Uh, the one tricky thing is that there's only a few research institutions that study, one in San Antonio. Uh, and I don't think they know why that is, but you can see there are tons of things, mm. the characteristic of aging, it's really absent. So I think we have a lot to learn from them. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Good model. One last question here from Sue N here in College Station. How many of the master athletes you study actually started training later in life as opposed to training earlier in life? Yeah, so that's a tricky question. So we tend to think that if you look at the master's athletes, we tend to think that they're lifelong athletes, but they're not. The many of those elite master's athletes, they started out very late in age, like 60 years of age, uh, for example. Uh, Gretchen's talk, they got 105 year old a French cyclist was featured. He was a truck driver, he was gardener until he was like 80, 85 years of age, and he started competing. Which is a one, this is a negative thing people think, but it could be a positive thing because many older people think that, well, master's athletes are way up there, we can't approach it. But wait, wait. They started out very late and they became successful. So once again, it's not really too late to act on those athletics and get going. So it could be a positive. Good take-home message. Never too late to start, right? Yep. Please join me in thanking Dr. Tanaka. Thank for you. Your talk.